guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another week of what's for dinner. If you're new here, hello and welcome. I am Taylor and I share these what's for dinner videos every Sunday to hopefully give you guys some new meal ideas and to motivate you to cook more for your family. So if you like these kinds of videos, I hope that you will subscribe down below. Any recipes I mention are always linked in the description box. Now let's go ahead and get into this week's what's for dinner. Friday night, I tried a new recipe called Parmesan Crusted Steak and Potato Sheep Pan Dinner. So I started off by cutting up a couple potatoes into bite-sized pieces. Then I toss my potatoes in a bowl with some olive oil, salt and pepper, Parmesan cheese, parsley, and minced garlic. Then I spread those potatoes out on a sheet pan that I lined with foil and I sprayed with some cooking spray. And those went in the oven for eight minutes under the broiler on high. While my potatoes were in the oven, I worked on my asparagus and my steak. So for the asparagus, I just rinsed it off and then patted it dry and snapped off the woody ends. And then I set it aside until the potatoes came out of the oven. For my steak, I am using a London broil, which is just a flank steak, so whatever you can find, either one of those works well for this. So I rubbed it down with some olive oil, and then you don't see me do it, but I did wash my hands. And then I put on some salt and pepper, some minced garlic, and some Parmesan cheese on both sides. When the potatoes came out of the oven, I pushed them to one side and then I added the asparagus on there and I gave it a little drizzle of olive oil, added some Parmesan cheese and some salt and pepper and I should have also added garlic but I forgot the garlic. Um, so I added the garlic later, but you should add the garlic at this point. And then I tossed them in that oil and pushed them to the side and made room for the steak. And then the steak went on one side and then this went back in the oven under the broiler and I did it for six minutes, then pulled it out, flipped the steak over and did it for another six minutes. This dinner turned out so good. Definitely one of my favorites from the week. It was so easy to put together and quick to make. 
and everybody loved it except for Elijah not liking the asparagus. So he just had some veggies on the side instead of some asparagus. He did try it again, still didn't like it. Um, Lily tried the asparagus. I think last time she liked it, I couldn't remember for sure, but she did like the asparagus and everything was so good. The crispy potatoes and the steak and it was just all delicious. Saturday night was just a quick and easy dinner. I made some tuna casserole. I've shared this before. If you're interested in the recipe, I will link it down below. Another video where I showed me making it in depth. And with tuna casserole, you always gotta have peas. Some people put it in it. Some people eat it on the side. We eat it on the side. It is Sunday night and tonight for dinner we are having some easy chicken parm. These are some Parmesan herb crusted chicken tenders that I picked up at Aldi. It is my first time trying them. There was six in the bag and I'm going to go ahead and cook all of them so that we can have leftovers. And I'm basically going to cook them in the air fryer and then top them with a little bit of marinara sauce and some cheese and throw them back in there for a few minutes and then serve over some spaghetti noodles with some more marinara sauce. It'll be super simple. These are raw, is what it says. They're not like the red bag chicken. They aren't already like cooked or anything. It says they are raw chicken. So it will probably take a little bit longer to cook. It doesn't have air fryer directions. It says in the oven at 400 for about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna do 375 and I'm gonna check them at like 12 minutes and flip them over and then probably around another 12 to 15 minutes is how long it'll take because the air fryer does cook things a little bit faster even at a lower temperature so i'm just gonna see how it goes and i will let y'all know how long they cook for The chicken took a total of about 25 minutes in the air fryer and then I topped it with the sauce and cheese and stuck it back in there for another five. And, and then we served it over some spaghetti with some marinara and mine topped with some fresh basil. And it was delicious. One of you actually recommended me trying this chicken the last time I made easy chicken parm with the red bag chicken. And I have to say, I really did like this chicken better for the chicken parm. Like the crispy coating on the chicken was more similar to like what you would get at a restaurant or if you made homemade chicken parm uh, versus like the breading on the um the red bag chicken the red bag chicken is more similar to like a chicken sandwich you would get at chick-fil-a or something still love the red bag chicken but i will definitely buy this green bag again when i want some easy chicken parm or even like some chicken parm sandwiches we actually had leftovers of chicken like i said and andy took one of the pieces of the chicken and just put it on a hamburger bun and ate a chicken sandwich for lunch the next day Monday night I knew I wasn't going to be filming me making dinner because I just made tacos and my instant pot rice which I will have linked down below and then I also just heated up some refried beans that I had in the freezer but I meant to film like our plates like put together and everything but I just completely lost track of doing that until after we were eating dinner and my uncle was like don't do you still do those videos and I was like yeah of course I still do those videos and I was like crap I didn't film a dinner video so it reminded me and so I just showed you guys what was left we had tacos they were good and then I promised that I would update on this taco sauce that I got at Aldi and I don't know who all tried it I know me and my sister tried it and we both liked it um would recommend it if you like taco sauce it's pretty good not too spicy it gave a nice flavor to our tacos Tuesday night I tried a new recipe called one pot pesto chicken tortellini but instead of tortellini I am using ravioli because Aldi did not have any tortellini so I'm starting off by cooking the ravioli according to the package directions I'm just boiling some salted water 
and then once the water came to a boil I cooked the ravioli for three to four minutes while my ravioli was cooking I stirred together some Italian seasoning some paprika and some pepper and then I tossed some cut up boneless skinless chicken breast into those seasonings and then I also sprinkled on some flour and I just tossed that to coat it really well Once my ravioli was done, I drained it and removed it from the pot, and in the pot I heated up some olive oil. To the hot oil, I added a fresh basil sprig and some minced garlic, and I let that cook for about 30 seconds. Then I added in my chicken and I cooked that till it was mostly cooked through. When the chicken was just about done, I removed that basil sprig and then I added in some chopped up sun-dried tomatoes and I just continued cooking until the chicken was done. Then I tossed in my ravioli and let that get heated through and then I added in one small jar of pesto and let that get warmed through as well. I served this topped with some fresh grated Parmesan cheese and some fresh basil and this was delicious. I was fully expecting complaints from the kids, especially Elijah, because the last time we did anything with pesto, it did not go over well. But I had really been wanting pesto, so, to, so I decided to give it a try again and there was no complaints. I didn't even tell them it was pesto. I was like, eat the food and they loved it. So this was a win and I can't wait to make it again. Hopefully next time I will be making it with tortellini because I think that would be really good. Wednesday night I tried a new recipe for a garlicky lemon baked tilapia. So I started off with some melted butter and to that I added some crushed red pepper flakes, some lemon juice, and some minced garlic.
Then I season my four pieces of tilapia with some salt and pepper and spoon that butter mixture over the top of them. Then I placed a couple slices of sliced lemon on top of each piece of tilapia, and this baked in the oven at 400 degrees for about 15 minutes. When it came out of the oven, I sprinkled it with a little bit of parsley, and then we served this with some boxed long grain wild rice from Aldi and some green beans on the side. We love this tilapia, it was really good. I really honestly love anything that's garlicky and lemony, so I knew that this would be a hit, and it was. We'll be making this recipe again. It is Thursday night and tonight for dinner I am making a chicken bacon ranch pull apart bread. I have made one of these before but it's been uh, quite a while. Um, I can't remember like maybe two years, a year or two, year and a half, somewhere around there. Um, but it was really good and for some reason I just wanted it again. Um, so that's what I'm making tonight. I made some chicken in the air fryer. I made way too much chicken. So I have about a breast and a half left. This is about a breast and a half that I shredded and then I chopped it with my scissors to make sure it was even like smaller pieces. So I seasoned that with some Tony's Creole seasoning and some Badia Complete. And I cooked that in the air fryer for about 30 minutes on 350. So I've got that in there and to that I'm going to add some real crumbled bacon. You could use bacon that you cooked, but I had this and I'm gonna use that since I didn't cook any actual bacon. I'm gonna add a ranch seasoning packet, um, some minced garlic, probably do two or three cloves of that. I've got half a stick of melted butter and then these are the biscuits that my Aldi has, these jumbo buttermilk biscuits. I think this will be a good amount. Um, the ones that I used previously were those smaller tubes that you get like four for like two dollars or something. They're like 50 cents a tube. Um, those are the ones that I used last time, but they only had these bigger biscuits at Aldi. So this is what I am using. And no ignore my barking dog. He is a turd and barking at the neighbors. But I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna cut each biscuit into four and then roll them into balls and add that to this. So I'm just gonna put everything together in this bowl with the chicken and like toss it. And then I've also got some cheese, the last bit of some cheddar, and then I shredded some more cheddar and I have some mozzarella. So we'll add a little bit of that to it and then top it with some more. And then it's going to go in this, what is this called, a bunt pan. And I'm gonna grease that with some olive oil cooking spray really well and then just dump it in there and top it with some more cheese. I've got my oven preheated to 375. I'm gonna have to check on how long I have to bake this, but I will let y'all know how long I bake this for. broke the garlic press <gasps> oh my god I just broke the garlic press um this thing how did you break I don't know it just snapped in my hand okay I'm gonna need a new garlic press how it pinched me when I did it Well, I guess that's all the garlic I'm going to add. I had two more cloves, but oh, that pinched me, that hurt. I guess um, I'm a little bit too strong for this old uh, garlic press. This is my dad's, I'm pretty sure. It's metal, man. How did I snap the metal? Okay. <laughs> Moving on. Maybe I'll add some garlic powder too.
Okay, so make sure you grease your pan really well. Mine looks pretty like here and then it kind of started to fall apart because I did not grease my pan well enough. If you have one that has grooves like this, make sure you get in the grooves really well and you shouldn't have a problem. Last time I made this with the same pan, I guess I greased it better because it came out um, perfectly. I will have that video linked down below if you're interested in watching that one. As I said, it's like a year and a half ago that I made it, but it is step by step and you can see the pretty picture instead of this one that fell apart. Still gonna taste good. I'm gonna plate this up. We've got um, some ranch to dip it in and Lily's got some marinara sauce because that is what Andy ate it with last time and it was really good. Um, she's got some mini sweet peppers and some tomatoes. Elijah has some mini sweet peppers and carrots. And I have tomatoes and carrots. And we're just going to put some of this bread on there and dip it in our sauce and have some fresh veggies with it. I wanted like some cucumbers and stuff with it or salad. But it's the last day before I go grocery shopping. So we are low on produce. But that is going to be Thursday night's dinner. And that is going to be it for this week's What's For Dinner. Let me know in the comments down below if you plan on trying any of these recipes. I definitely had some good ones this week that I will be making again. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. And I have a playlist linked down below of all my What's For Dinners. I've been doing these videos for years and sharing them weekly. So I've got tons of ideas for you if you need more ideas. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.